welcome to Spanish palette. And as a birthday treat, you can't get anything finer than this. Like the God of Wine, oh. God of Wine, one of the most wonderful people in the world of wine here in Toro, on his way to Portugal. I thought you were talking about your wines and these lovely <laughs> bits of charcuterie we have in front of us. But I mean, you know, we've, we've, we've got five wines to taste. What could be better? Six maybe, but five will do for the moment. Okay. And um, I've got a couple of, I've got some jamon, I've got some lomo, which both smell fabulous. I haven't tasted them yet. Smell so we're going to start with the wine, right? We're going to start with the wine, yeah. So this is our little project called Botas de Barro, uh, Muddy Boots in English. Muddy Boots. Muddy Boots. Great. <laughs> and with a picture of Muddy Boots on the lid. Absolutely. Five different muddy boots on the label, and they all the boots all belong to a real historic farmer from each of the regions. Tremendous. So it's all about sort of giving love back to these farmers. You know, they're the unsung heroes in our world of wine. They're never on front of the camera, and so it was just our way of saying thank you to these farmers Brilliant. that Brilliant. have looked up to these vineyards for years for, for us. Well, it's great, and probably, as you say, looked after them for years. Probably the wines are made from quite old vines in general. Not all of them, probably. Well, the youngest vines that we use are about 40 years old. That's about the youngest vines. 40 years old in some places would be would be old vines. But I realise that here in Spain, you're able to go much, much further back than that. Well, that's one of the great things about Spain, isn't it? Because we've got this wonderful history and a preserved culture of yeah, vineyards. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. if you go to the new world, you know, 50, 60 year olds, like, wow, new vines. Yeah. Now, one of the things I love about this range is that we've got here five wines from different denominaciones, different mm -hmm. appellations, as the French would say. Yeah. And we've only got two wines that have the same grape variety. Right. The rest are all individual grape varieties. So we're starting with the white wine. Mm -hmm. from Rueda, um, and of course this is a Verdejo, because that is the great white grape of Rueda. Of course, it's the, the new superstar of white wine is made in Spain, everybody loves Verdejo, and Rueda, we're here in Toro, and Rueda is just right next door, yeah. and the change that we've got in Rueda, I mean, every, Rueda is on every wine list, on every shelf, and when you taste the Verdejo grape, it's easy to understand why. It's just delicious. Can I say, Nicola, that actually not all Rueda is brilliant? Most. But, Most. but, but this is a cracking example. Because there are some Ruedas, I have to say, where it perhaps isn't quite as obvious. And maybe the other thing, of course, you have to say about Rueda is that they're now allowed to grow Sauvignon Blanc as mm -hmm. well. Yep. And so that. That, that heritage of Rueda has been slightly diluted. The Sauvignon makes nice wine, but it's not the true Rueda. It's not. This is the Verdejo. This is Rueda at its most typical. Um, and I must say, when I first came to Rueda, they had two different styles of Rueda. One of them was aged in barrels, mm -hmm. and it tasted a bit like Fino Sherry. Yeah. And the other one, which was really the new king on the block, and I'm now going back, gosh, to the 1980s. Um, it was just coming along, it was modern, crisp, fermented in stainless steel tanks, and it tasted like this, but actually not quite as good, because it was early days. Well, I think we've gone from Rueda being Palomino Fino Grey, mm. this cherry style, the older style, mm. and then all of a sudden, you know, from the 1970s onwards, a huge transformation and um, making some wonderful wines. And then, you know, Rueda is becoming incredibly popular. It's become popular. And, and as, you know, with popularity comes quantity, and not all the wine is as good as this one. I mean, this one. We know what Sauvignon Blancs tastes like, and so you, you have great Sauvignon Blancs from all over the world. But this is Verdejo, this is different, this is this is what Rueda should be. This is us. This is and Spain. It's, it's got this wonderful, it's herby, it's tangy, it's it's got a green note to it. It's just the kind of thing, you could drink it by itself entirely happily, but, but put it with sort of something really herby and summery, 
and cool it down, not too cold, but just gently chills down. And this is a magnificent wine, full of personality, because it's a different grape, it's a Spanish grape. And it's because it's old wines, it's bush vines, yeah. and it's small production per hectare. Um, most of the vineyards here are still picked by hand, mm. no irrigation. We have a little bit of trellis vineyards in the, the younger stuff. Well, you can't really do bush vines any other way, can you? Mm -hmm. You've got to get them by hand. And that and then the, 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 it limits the production per hectare, yeah. and it keeps that Rueda character. Yeah, yeah. And then we use um, natural yeast. We don't use sort of commercial yeast that makes lots of Rueda taste too much like pineapple. I'm getting here. There's a bit of pineapple, but not very much. And we work three months on the leaves to give an extra depth, and it's got lovely mid palate sort of grape grapefruit acidity. Yeah, no, it's it's, 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 it's it's lovely stuff. Should we do the reds? Get the reds. We got four of these. We did the same. Um, so first up, Jumilla. Jumilla. Are you a fan of Jumilla? I'm a great fan of Jumilla. I think it's changed a lot since I, I first came to Jumilla, um, when they were pretty head-splitting, frightening, stuff. big stuff, you know, big, big alcohols, you know, everything was alcoholic, yeah. from, the, for, from the Blanco to the Tinto, and the Rosado was terrifying. But this is this is light on its feet. It's light and fresh. And again, a different grape variety. This is a grape variety that started in Spain, Monastre, mm -hmm. and then the French sort of took it over and called it Mauvais. Well, but, you know, that's fine, that's fine. It is originally Spanish, like Carnacha, mm -hmm. um, and it makes very good wine here in Spain. They, the French always say, I don't know what you think about this, the French always say Monastre, Mauvais, is better if you can see the sea. Absolutely. Close to the coast. Kumiya's not very far, is it? Not, not very no. far. It's in, so, that, it's in sort of a corridor, a Mediterranean corridor, yeah. like a big valley. So the Those eastern places. side of Spain. Mm -hmm. Right down there in the south, yeah. southeast. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And it, it's, Kumiya is one of those typical regions in Spain that they've been making, growing grapes and making wine for centuries. But why have we only just recently discovered it? Well, new generation coming, putting sure. a bit of technology, different approach to amazing old vines. I mean, these amazing old vines have always been there. Yeah. It's just what we do with those old vines, it's actually changed. Yeah, yeah. And the way that um, Humia is, is working right now. You see, this is, Humia. it's 13.5%. Now, that's, it, that's quite enough. But the, the wines that I remember when I first went to Humia, they must have been knocking on 15, possibly some of them more than 15. Well, I think the renaissance of Jumilla, I'm talking sort of 1990s, early 2000s, it was very much sort of the US market led. There was a lot of importers for the US mm. that thought, oh, this is wonderful. Because mm. it, because if you have the Mediterranean influence, you have this big, massive fruit flavors with this really sort of sweet, rounded tanning, which is perfect for the US market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they always like a, a heavy dose of alcohol. When we found these farmers, and we traveled all around Spain looking for farmers that had amazing old vines that either sort of a, lot, a bit lost and they weren't really being sort of paid what they should be. For they were grapes. probably delivering to the, the, the grapes to the co op and getting almost nothing. Either throwing it into the co op and a, a sort of bit lost. And so, yeah. you know, my I, as a Brit here in Spain, my farmers have given me so much. Yeah. And it was sort of my turn to sort of give back. So we traveled all over Spain. And in Comilla, you know, there's so many families that are sat on 50, 60, 70 year old wine, monastrel, throwing it in with whatever, yeah. and coming out with not very interesting stuff. And I just, you know, this is our lovely take on a fresh, bright, fruitful, with just a touch of oak, yeah. nice bit of rounded softness and sweetness on the palate. And I love the fact that it's it's got that that dark monastrel kind of fruit. It's, it's, you can see that if you left this, in your cellar, in your garage, mm -hmm. under the stairs, whatever, in the bottle, over a few years, it would go into a sort of leathery, mm -hmm. dark, complex state. It's, 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 it's not going to last that long, frankly, because people will drink it. I would drink it. Yeah, you know, it's it's it, 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 we'll, get, no, we'll get drunk <laughs> because it's very good. But it's, it's very good because it doesn't have those really high alcohols and pretty frightening tannins that mm -hmm. they used to have. I think a lot of Spain kind of um, followed a bit of the press, certain press, and for many years, you know, the, through the noughties, mm. we were going through high, higher alcohol and more tanning. 
but I think the whole world is changing now. And you know, some people want a bit more freshness and yeah, and no, I quite agree, quite agree. Yeah. And this this does fresh and juicy very well. But okay. It's quite fresh and juicy because you drank the whole thing. It, it seems to have gone evaporation. That's, that's my test. It's evaporation. Whether you like it or not? Okay. It's fine. Not okay. To my I drank. <laughs> Okay, next one, we're now going on to our um, answer. So, now we have a different grape variety. We have another great Spanish grape, also borrowed by the French, the great Garnacha, Garnacha Tinta. Um, and the French, of course, call it Grenache, and they behave as if it originated in France, but actually it's a Spanish grape through and through. And I just think, I tasted this for the first time yesterday, and I thought, wow, this is amazing. And so I think you actually said on the label, it's old vines. Mm -hmm. And you've just got this extraordinary richness and ripe fruitiness on the, on, the, on the nose. And it's just, it's a sort of deep, almost treacly raspberry jam kind of fruit. I think this is sensational. Well, this is, I mean, Almanza, who knows Almanza? Mm. Almanza's up on the rise. It's going to be one of the, the regions to come out very soon as one of the most popular regions for Spain. And it's all about this Garnacha grape, high altitude. It's got this Atlantic influence on one side, but a lot of Mediterranean soft. Because it's right on the sort of eastern edge of Castilla La Mancha. Yeah, it? it's right on the way to, on the east coast. But just just above Mancha. for me, Yep, just north like of Mia. Yeah. yeah. But we've got high altitude. Yeah. So we've got 900 meters chalky soil and this really soft Mediterranean breeze and old vines. The average year of sort of 50 to 70 year old vines. Mm. Bush vines planted three meters by three meters, tiny production per hectare. Yeah. And here what we do is we leave the grapes on the vine mm -hmm. until 15% of the bunch is facets. Oh really? It's so quite shriveled. A little bit. Yeah. And yeah. that just gives us this really lovely extra level. So we've flavor. stepped up a little bit in alcohol here. We're now on fourteen and a half percent. But yeah. you know, to be honest, Garnacha, Grenache, it's that's not unusual to get really good bright Grenache. You probably starting about fourteen percent. Um, because mm -hmm. then you get some really great flavours that Grenache can give. Um, Sorry, I was getting Garnacha, Garnacha, Spanish. Garnacha. Garnacha. What I love about this is just it fills your palate, but this the on the textures is just so soft and velvety. It is. It and is. there's it's no funny. drying harshness of the palate. No, 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 no. It's just it's got lovely. a little bit of tannin to remind you it is red wine, after all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's it's very, very smooth. Okay. Let's move Toro. on to Toro. Your home your home territory. Yes. So Toro. Toro is, it, it has this great variety called Tinte de Toro, which is, of course, none other than Tempranillo. Um, which I have is... to say it though, right? Mm. Because it is so different to any other Tempranillo from Spain. You taste Tempranillo from Rioja, Tempranillo from Ribera, Tempranillo from Toro, and they are so different. Yeah. yeah. Does it, it makes it more different. They the should be. Match. They yeah. should be. I think, I think some of the younger vineyards in places like, I don't know, Pilar I say Ribera as well. Where there was a huge expansion of vineyard mm -hmm. planting not that long ago. They didn't really have local nurseries, and so they bought quite a lot of plants, I think, from Rioja and Navarra, mm -hmm. where they did have nurseries. So, those will take a little bit of time to settle down and become truly Ribera grapes. But Toro is different. They've been here forever. And so, these are really, these are, these, this is Tempranillo, Tita de Toro. Which has been it's had its feet under the table for hundreds of years. Well, it's been here since pre-Roman times, actually. Ah, thousands so of years. It's been here for a while, you know. And in Toronto, we have the oldest average age of vineyards in anywhere else in the world. Okay. Wow. So the average of Toro is about 50, 55 years old. That's the average. Nobody in Toro is getting excited about a 50-year-old vine, right? No. That's the norm in here. Because we weren't affected by phylloxera. Yeah. So this little beetle that tunneled into the, the soil, ate up the Gold roots. Up the roots. But we had this sandy soil, so all the tunnels collapsed. Oh, good. And so the phylloxera was suffocated and it said, yeah. Don't yeah. don't eat toro guys. So they left us our vineyards to yeah. to share. And of course, just, just just to make the point about old vines, 
With old vines, you get a lower yield. So if you are purely growing grapes for quantity, you're not going to have as many grapes to sell. But the quality of those grapes, the flavor intensity of those grapes, is just way higher. So you have fewer grapes, and if you can't sell them for more money, you're going to lose money. But when you get bodegas here that appreciate that these vines give a smaller number of grapes, but of tremendous intensity of flavor, then they will pay decent money, and those old vines will stay in the ground, producing year after year, and being highly valued and respected. And that's exactly what's happened here in Toro. Brilliant. So all the new producers, I mean, in 1999, there were only nine producers. Today, we're probably, in, in physical bodegas, we're over 60, but mm -hmm. people hiring tanks and making wines, we're probably close to 150. And it's all people coming in and making top quality wine. And it's yeah. really keeping the quality levels of Toro. And That's it's, great. It's positioning Toro where I think it should be, at the top of Spanish wine. There was a moment where Toro was, was just big and rather brutish. Mm -hmm. And um, this this is just such a long way on from there. Well, it's got 14.5% alcohol. Yeah. But to be honest, Doesn't you don't really see that. Mm -hmm. It's got freshness. It's got brightness. It's... Frighteningly drinkable, he said, eyeing his glass for another swig. Indeed. Um, <laughs> it's just lovely. It's our take on Toro. Yeah. Okay, I've been here for 20 years and I wanted to make approachable Toro. I wanted people, I wanted to make a wine that people could have with a Monday night pizza, a Friday night steak, and everything in between. Is pizza much eaten in Toro? No, right. yeah. I don't think it was a typically Spanish thing. No, but you know, it goes well with Tinta de Toro. Okay, fine. Nice bit of truffle oil on top as well. Uh, okay. Okay. Good, 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 good. So, yes. Then, then that's <laughs> tremendous. I mean, this is the kind of wine, as you said, that is giving Toro an increasingly good name. And actually, some of the top Toro wines are getting really quite expensive, aren't they? Well, they are, but they come from like 140 year old wines yeah, with like, yeah, you know, know, one one kilo of grape per vat. Wow. Yeah. So at the top yeah. end, yes. they're worth it. They're really worth it. But Bodas um, is all about making Toro approachable, which well, is... it certainly works. It certainly works. And an approachable price as well. Absolutely. Brilliant. Okay, our last one here. Mm -hmm. uh, it says Rivera del Duero. Just down the road. Just down the road, or up the road, whichever you like. But same grape variety. Again, Tempranillo, but... This time it's, it's Rivera del Duero's take on Tempranillo. So Tinto Fino, Tinto del País, whichever you prefer to call it. Um, I can't quite understand why it, it has both sexes, but there we are. And it means very, very, uh, you know, very I never understood. flexible. Yes. And every farm that you talk to, they, they say our version is the correct version. Of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> but it's Tempranillo adapted, it's temporary. To, adapted to Rivera's soil and climate. And and what, and just, what's the average altitude? Of Rivera del Duero. It's, it's quite high, isn't it? Well, as you get up north, it's slightly higher. It's getting up to about 800, more 800 or less. 800 meters 900. is high. Wow. Well, 900, there's a bit but Where are you here in Toro? Um, Toro, we're about 650 to 820. So, still pretty high. So, we have, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's pretty darn hot in the summer. It's and very cold in the winter. Yeah, quite. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, it's it, that that has a big influence on the way that vines behave, doesn't it? Because if it's if it's hot all the time, they don't have time in the night to sort of <sighs> take, take a breath and come cool down. Um, and that makes for rather sort of big. You know, they they lose their acidity and they're a bit floppy and big and and over alcoholic. But here, you've got these conditions. And I remember once in Rivera del Duero talking to someone and saying, gosh, they've got a lot of grapes on those vines. And he said, well, we rely on the frosts to do our pruning for us. Absolutely. Because we lose so much, so many vines, so many grapes and bunches through the frost or, or, or the early shoots. 
But you know, we don't have to worry about so much about pruning. Roberta Guerrero, you're guaranteed some kind of frost and quite late frost yeah. anyway. Yeah. So you have to take that in, into account, you know. But the day and night temperatures, both in Toro and Roberta, are incredible. I and mean, you could have, you know, 40 degrees plus in the day. And actually get down to about 10 degrees in, at night time in the summer, which wow. is, you know, that's, a, summer. Wow. that's a huge difference, it's especially yeah, yeah, yeah. the last sort of six, four to six weeks before yeah. harvest, yeah. Mid, mid August onwards, um, the temperature fluctuation is just insane. And that's what really gives us, you know, the skin, thicker skin, it gives us our flavor and our character, and it's, it's key, it's essential. Let's taste. It's got this slightly, it, it, comparing it with the Toro, it's got a slightly deeper, richer kind of nose to it. It's darker, it's richer, it feels as if it's, it can't, it, it, it's more, it's actually fruitier than the Toro. The Toro is quite savoury, quite light on its feet. This is, it's deeper and it's richer. Ah. Look at the colour as well. Mm. It's both the same vintage, by the way. Mm. The Rivera's tasting much younger. This is much darker in colour. Mm -hmm. It's got a really dark purple black colour almost. Yeah. And as you say, it's got more the tannins are more present. I think I would be tempted if I had a case of this wine to stick half a dozen bottles in the cellar mm -hmm. and see what happens to them over a, over a period of time. Because I think it will age brilliantly. It's, it's very good now. And again, it's 14.5%, so it's the same alcohol as the Toro. Um, and it's, it's very bound up with this very rich, fruity character, but quite firm tannins. And I mean, this needs something um, fairly substantial to go with it. Well, speaking of which... Talking of which, <laughs> we seem to have this, this wonderful little charcuterie in front. Last time you were here, I promised you some nice jamón from mm, Spain. That smells good. And here in Toro, we're just up the road from Vijuelo, which is in the Salamanca region. Yeah. And it's one of the best places ever mm. for a Iberico ham. And these guys, uh, my friends from Lafke, I mean, there's a couple of top producers, but these are right up there. And, and we became really good friends quite recently uh, because we found that Botas and Lafke go super well together. And, uh, and I thought I, I would treat you on your little journey. And what a very good idea. And your pit stop. Pit stop. There were a couple of glasses which seem to, the rate of evaporation has been slightly higher. So I'm just going to give myself a tiny refresh of the Jumilla and the, Al, and the Almanza. So I'm, I've got the flavor of this, this logo in my mouth. And this, this, these guys at Blackett, the family-owned producer, mm -hmm. and they've been perfecting Iberico products for 80 years. So they're pretty, pretty good. good at they pretty good at what they do, and they do a whole range of stuff. And um, I have to admit, I'm the only vegetarian I think in Spain. Mm -hmm. But I am actually really tempted. It smells absolutely delicious, delicious from here, um, and I can tell Ooh. by your face that you quite like that. <laughs> and that logo with the Almanza is just terrific. I'm going to try the Toro. I bet with the Toro and the Ribera. Well, I don't know. We'll see. You think better with the Toro than the Ribera? You're not an easy sir. I, I think that the people at Black they really like the Almanza with the jamón and the logo okay. with the Toro. Oh. Okay. But, but that was the last conclusion that we came to. But, you know, we've had several bottles of both. <laughs> So I don't know if it, that's a Actually, scientific... that's very good. The Toro is a long one. Mm -hmm. So now I feel like to go back <laughs> and, um, and try the, the jamón. The jamón. With the almanza, you said. I'm going to go back and see Jomia. Mm. Jomia's been in bottle now for six months and it's just coming to its own. And we're just, we, this is what we're drinking right now in, in the office. It's our new discovery. You know, when, when you put wine in bottle and, and it sort of peaks and troughs over time, and we sort of try to find the, the best moment for drinking, we really enjoy the Jumilla. These guys got it right. This is really good Jamon. I know you're not a Jamon. I can smell it from here. But it's got this wonderful, intensely savoury character that Greta Jamon has. And that is beautifully offset 
by that lovely, sweet, ripe fruit of the Almanza, those old Garnacha vines. Fantastic combination. Good oh. stuff. Good stuff on your road. What a good yeah. stop. Thank you very much. And what a tremendous lineup of wines. And we're so lucky to be able to be here in person when, with everything that's going on. Um, so yeah. keep safe. Thank you yeah, so you much too. for your visit. Enjoy the rest of your wines and the jamón. Okay. And guys, look out for Botas de Barro. It's a very impressive range of wines. Very Spanish. Mm-hmm.